Hi, everybody. I'm so glad you're here and um, welcome to this evening's yoga practice. I hope you can all hear me well. Um, today is a mat class, so you'll be um, coming down onto the floor a little bit. Um, we won't be doing anything too strenuous. Um, we're also going to be doing some um, breath work tonight um, to try and help balance out our um, sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system, uh, which will be really helpful. So um, why don't you guys all take a spot on your uh, mat on the floor, maybe grab a little cushion or pillow or block to sit on. Um, the main emphasis is to get as comfortable as possible. Good, and why don't you um, close your eyes and just rest your hands on your knees and take a deep breath in and sigh it out. Ah. And take a moment just to express some gratitude for all the things that you've been able to do today, despite any struggles know that it's still a beautiful day and a beautiful life and we can express thanks for that. We're going to start with some box breathing and box breathing is a really good way to settle into the body and into the mind. Box breathing is done by inhaling for uh, a count so we'll probably do a three count and then you hold for three, you exhale for three, and then you hold again for three. It works really nicely if you just close your eyes and just start to settle into your body. Go ahead and exhale first. Inhale for three, two, one, and hold for three, two, one. Exhale, three, two, one. Hold, three, two, one. Inhale, three, two, one. Hold, three, two, one. Exhale, three, two, one. And hold, three, two, one. Inhale, hold. Exhale, hold, inhale, hold, exhale, and hold. Then go ahead and drop the technique and just breathe naturally, keeping the eyes closed. And notice the effect of box breathing on your body and on your mind. How did it feel? What did you notice? Good. We're going to go into the second breathing technique, which is alternate nostril breathing. Alternate nostril breathing is really important to try and balance out the sympathetic and parasympathetic uh, nervous system. What we're going to be doing is bringing the index finger and the middle finger up to your um, third eye. Now that allows you to close off your nostrils using your thumb and your fourth and fifth digit. So what we're going to be doing as we breathe in, we close off one side and we're going to then close that side and open up the other side and vice versa. So it kind of looks like you're inhaling exhaling, inhaling, exhaling. I don't know if you can see my hands from here. It kind of comes in on one side, exhales over here, inhales and exhales. So I'll guide you through this practice. I just wanted to give you that visual. So go ahead and bring your index finger and your middle finger up to your third eye and close your um, right nostril with your thumb. So I'm using my right hand just to make it clear. Inhale on the left. Close the left and exhale right. Inhale right, close the right, exhale left. 
Inhale, left. Close the left. Exhale, right. Inhale, right. Close the right. Exhale, left. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, left. Exhale, right. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One more cycle. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Drop your hands, bring your hands down to your knees, keep your eyes closed, and start to feel what effect that had on your mind and on your body. Good. From here, we're going into the third breathing technique. We're going to do an emptying breath. The focus is on a shorter inhalation and a longer exhalation. So we're gonna do an inhale for a three count and an exhale over six counts. It's a long time. And what I want you to do is really start to stretch out that exhale. That helps the parasympathetic nervous system. So when we're really stressed out and when we're in a high pain level, Working the parasympathetic nervous system can really help to balance that out. So let's sit and practice. Take your comfortable seat and rest your hands on top of your knees. You can inhale gently through your nose for three, two, one. And then exhale through your mouth, six, five, four, Three, two, one. Inhale through your nose. Three, two, one. Exhale through your mouth. Five, six, five, four, three, two, one. And inhale through your nose for three, two, one. And exhale six, five, four. Three, two, one. Last one. Inhale. Three, two, one. Exhale. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Drop the technique. Keep your eyes closed and just pay attention to what's happening in your body. What happens to your mind? What happens to your breathing rate, what happens to your heart rate, your tone. Do you feel more connected? Do you feel more grounded? These are all things that you can start to pay attention to. Good. Let's bring some movement into our practice today. So go ahead and flutter open the eyes. We're going to reach the right arm all the way up and overhead and really start to open up the right rib cage. So reach as high as you can go, like you're gonna grab an apple on a tree. Good, and then exhale, bring it down. Lift the left arm all the way up, reaching and expanding the left rib cage. Good, and all the way down. Right arm goes up to reach as high as you can go again. Now bring the left hand down, and reach over for a big side bend. Good, inhale back up, stay as long as you can get, and then exhale the arm down. Left arm goes to reach, reach as high as you can get first, really coming up out of the spine, bring your right hand down, and then reach over, stretching out the side body. Beautiful, inhale back up, and down. Now bring both arms up, reach as high as you can get, 
while keeping the shoulders down away from your ears. So we don't want to live up here. We really want to open up the chest, expand our lungs. Good. And then exhale the hands down. Bring them behind you onto your fingertips and open up big heart. Stretch the shoulders back and gently tip the head backwards. Breathe. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Release and bring the hands in front of you and walk them forward till you come to a seated forward fold. Good. Relax the head down. Bring the right hand on top of the left and stretch out back into that forward fold, feeling a little expansion on the right side now. Good. Return the hand back to where it was and walk yourself back up. Bring your hands behind you, release your feet and shake them out. You can even tap them on the floor. And now put your feet back, but put them with the opposite foot in front. It's gonna feel unnatural, but that's okay. Now go into your forward fold again, and you'll feel the opposite hip stretch, reaching forward. Now place your left hand on top of your right to open up that left side. Breathe. Put your hands back to center and slowly walking back up. Beautiful. We're going to come into a tabletop position. So you're going to bring your hands underneath your shoulders and your knees just underneath your hips. Now I'd like to get a little bit of postural strengthening, core strengthening work here. So what we're going to do is there are two levels that I'm gonna offer. So for those who would like, there is going to be a plank, okay? But you can do your plank on your knees. So shifting forward, let me show it from the side. So I can be in a plank this way, or I can be up on my knees, okay? Or sorry, on my feet. So pick your plank, but what we're going to be doing is if you're in the plank, you're going to shift your weight back into bear and then forward into plank. If you're on your knees doing a plank, all I want you to do is to lift your knees up just for a moment and then put them down. So those are the two alternations, plank to bear versus a knee plank to hover. Okay, so we're gonna work that. Let's start in our tabletop and let's try going into your version of your plank. Hold, breathe in, breathe out either into your bear or into your hover. Your core will be active. Good, extend out into your plank. Good, back into your bear or your hover. One more of each, plank to hover, we're all getting warm. Drop your knees down, come into child's pose. Now you can take a variety of child's poses here. You can either have your knees close together, arms overhead, or your arms alongside your body, or you can open up your knees wide and let your thorax just kind of cradle between your thighs. Pick the child's pose that works best for you and that's gonna serve you today. Wherever you're at, breathe. Find your breath. So the practice we just did stimulated sympathetic nervous system. We all felt a little warmer. We had to move blood. <laughs> we had to get our heart pumping. That's good, we wanna balance that out though. Every time we stress the body, we also have to teach it how to come down. That's what child's pose is for. Find your exhale by doing the emptying breath. So if your breath count on the inhale is about a two or three, 
Do double that on the exhale. Good. Take one more deep, emptying breath. Then bring your hands forward, curling your toes, and we're going to pop up into our downward dog by lifting our hips up to the sky. I want you to relax your head here as much as possible. And the goal is not to stretch our knees as straight as they can be. Instead, I just want to elongate the spine. Good. If you want, you can walk out the dog by alternating bending the knees and straightening the heels down to the floor. Good. Come back to center, look between your hands and step your right foot between your hands. Good. Spin onto the back, spin the foot flat on the back foot. And now we're gonna reach up and the arms are gonna come overhead. Good. This looks familiar, didn't we? We reached our arms up in the beginning of class. That was to prepare you for this pose. Good, I want you to open up into the chest, breathe in. Then exhale, breathe out and sweep them back behind you. Inhale up again. Exhale down behind you. One more dynamic movement, lifting up and then down, exhaling all the air out. Good. Bring your hands down and step it back into your downward dog with gentleness, with ease, with kindness. Good. You can stay here in your downward dog. If you need to come down to child's pose for a moment, do that. If you're looking for something different in your downward dog, you can swivel your feet side to side to open up the side body. Then come back to center, step your left foot forward between your hands. Swivel onto the back foot, then inhale, arms come up. One, good, exhale, push that energy back. Inhale, energy up and forward. Exhale, pushing it back. Inhale, scoop it up last time. And exhale, push it out of the way. Bring your hands down, step back and see your downward dog. Beautiful. Breathe here. This is a posture that works on lengthening the spine. So if you need to get, bend your knees to really get into this pose, do that. Good. We're going to go into a pigeon stretch next. So we're going to bring our right knee forward and onto the mat. Good. Our left leg is out straight behind us. And we have a couple options here. You can stay up high if you'd like, or come down and rest over the front leg. A lot of people love this stretch. We get into those hips and really start to open them up. And it feels so good at the end of our day. So take a moment, rest into your pigeon. Breathe. Notice what kind of nervous system you're in right now. Sympathetic, parasympathetic. And see what you need. Do you need more energy? Then focus on the inhale to get a little boost of energy or focus on this detoning, de-stressing, long exhale to get the parasympathetic cooling breath. So good.
from here, we're gonna come into a really fun little transition. So just let yourself fall over onto your hip. So you're on the outside of that right tush and see if you can bring the left leg around and bring the foot across and over the right knee. That was a fun transition, wasn't it? So here, we're going to lengthen the right arm up again. See how this is familiar from the beginning of class. And then we're gonna rotate to the left and bring our hand over the thigh for a spinal twist. Now, if your neck is really tight, you do not need to look over your left shoulder. You don't need to strain anything. I'd really just want to get your heart to rotate. So we're getting a thoracic rotation. Beautiful. When you're here, remember your breath. Inhale, lengthen spine. Exhale, soften into that rotation. Take one more nice breath here in that spinal twist and release coming forward and bring your hands in front of you, swivel that left leg around and step it back into your downward dog. Good. You should start to feel your downward dog open up a little bit more for you now. You've been here before, your neurology's kicking in. This is good. We're going into the pigeon on the opposite side. So bring the left knee forward and then do what you did on the other side for this side. So either if you wanna stay up high or if you wanna come down low and sink down into that glute on the left side, Pick what works best for you today. Don't worry about the next person or what you did last week. That doesn't matter. Just you in the moment, you with your breath. That's the only thing that matters right now. Focusing on the type of breath that you want to cultivate here. If you need a little bit more energy or if you need that calm and relaxation, use your breath to facilitate that. We're going to come up and into that funny transition. So just let yourself kind of fall onto that left glute. Help your right knee up and forward and drop the right foot on the other side of your knee. Then reach the left arm up nice and high. Make yourself as tall as possible. You can bring your right hand behind you and then twist over towards the right. Again, we can protect the neck here. We don't need to wring it out. This is really about a thoracic heart opening rotation. Inhale, lengthen spine. Exhale, soften and stretch just a little bit more. Find the ease within the effort. Find the parasympathetic within the sympathetic. Find the balance, the oscillation between the two. Slowly come back, bring your hands in front of you, step it back for one more downward dog. If you want, taking a deep inhale and sigh it out. <sighs> We're gonna bring our knees down, swivel both of our feet forward. Or forward fold. So I want you to kind of just rock side to side and find your sit bones. If you're sitting too far backwards, you might be sitting on your tailbone and we shouldn't be sitting there. So bring your pelvis forward, lengthen up. That's why I had you do that spinal twist with that lengthening component. So this is kind of our apex pose for our class today. 
We're lengthening without using our legs, right? This is all trunk postural control. Good. Arms reach up. Here we go. As we inhale, we lengthen. As we exhale, we soften. Now take about four to five breaths slowly transition into this pose. I don't want you to do it all at once. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, soften. Every little step, you start to uncover more and more of your body. You start to learn more about the nuances that go on. When you find your final resting place, you know, you might land with your hands on your knees, on your shins. Some people can touch their feet. It's no big deal. It's all the same. As long as you're breathing, you are doing yoga beautifully. Relax the back of the neck and breathe. Slowly coming back up. Maybe you want to just wiggle out your legs a little bit. Rock them side to side. And then go ahead and just take a seat. Find a comfortable resting place. Put your hands on top of your knees. And close your eyes. And notice what you notice. Take inventory of your body and of your mind and of your emotional landscape. Notice how tending to yourself for half an hour can change and shift all of those. And we're gonna finish the day with a quote that I read that I thought was absolutely beautiful. This is from an attorney and poet, Max Ehrman, and I got this from James's Clear, um, Clear's newsletter. You are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars. You have a right to be here. And whether or not it is clear to you, no doubt the universe is unfolding as it should with all of its sham, drudgery, and broken dreams, it is still a beautiful world. Be cheerful and strive to be happy. And with that, I would love to close out tonight's session. It has been such an honor to guide you through your little practice. And I'm so glad you all came to show up today. You really are remarkable human beings and go spread the joy. Thank you. Hopefully I can. Yeah, it was great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. If anybody has any questions, I always love to open up the floor in case anybody has questions. So you're more than welcome to shoot anything out to me. So I have a question. Do you do you find that downward dog is sometimes contraindicated for people with migraine? It's a great question. A lot of people with um, migraine don't like downward dog. Right. But I teach yoga here at Barrow um, to the migraine population. And I do downward dog all of the time. Right. And I work at it through a process. And um, I found that a lot of them actually are able to do it. And on the days that they can't, they do something different. And that's okay. And I think... Um, in talking with them, they found that by allowing that, they don't feel as restricted. So it's not, this migraine, so many things kind of almost get taken away. And I just hold that space, like you, you can do hard things. And some days your body's going to say, I can't. And, and 
listening to that and respecting that is so that's yoga as well. But sometimes they are able to do it. And I've seen tremendous progress with some of these people. And it's, it's heartwarming to see that. So the answer is nuanced, to be honest. What, what do you recommend as a modification for people that can't, like they're having a headache day and they just can't do it? Yeah. Sometimes doing, it's a lot about the actual inversion. So having the head that low. So working just a hip hinge rather than going all the way down, doing a partial hip hinge, working postural strength, you're getting a lot of benefits that could be helpful for the body um, that, or you can do something like a chair pose. Um, I don't know if people are familiar with that. You're at, kind of going into a static squat. You're working the legs and really it's about movement. So if you're doing anything that's getting you out of your regular position, you're going to find benefit. But usually a hip hinge or a chair pose will be a nice modification because you're not inverting. Yeah, thank great you. question. Yeah. Anyway, thank you all so much. I hope you have a great night. So. Thank you. You're welcome.